But people seem to think like to develop a distro, you need to be like, like, mind. like mm-hmm. I, most of my work is like, I add a package to the Catalyst spec file and it works. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, it's like, I don't, I'm not particularly like skilled in Linux. I just know how to get around the terminal. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think like if you've got an idea, it will take you like 90% of the way there. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of the... Honestly, a lot of distros aren't that crazy. Like, obviously, if you're doing something like Vanilla OS, like, that's obviously a big endeavor. Yes. Blend OS. You're doing... You want to make Gen 2. Like, Gen 2, like, that's, that's a big endeavor. You're making a whole new package manager, all of this stuff. But a lot of distros are basically just a... It's just a, a ISO of someone's config, effectively. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean... The lucky thing with us is, like, if you're doing a distro like Fedora or Debian, you're making your own package. You have to package every single package that someone wants to use. Whereas we just kind of say, use Flatpak or use DistroBox, um, which is, it's like, we just have to work on making the system work good, like Gentoo work well as an immutable system and all, everything around that, like user space utilities and stuff, like how do you update the system? Mm-hmm. Um, which, by the way, Used to be a manual process. Um, used to just download the new Squash FS and reboot. Um, oh, I'm going to go on a rant here. Okay. I'm very sorry about this. No, go ahead. So, Draper, which people might not know, this is the thing that creates an init RAM FS in Fedora, mm-hmm. and also the Gentoo disk kernel uses it by default. Um, if you're on Arch, you probably wouldn't have used it as you use the Arch ones or whatever it's called. You know, like update init RAM. I don't know. Anyway, so. We use Draycart to mount the squash FS. There is an option that uh, if I open a terminal quickly, cap my proc command line, there is a one called rd.live.overlay.overlayfs equals one. Ah, okay, now, yes. Very convenient. That name. used to be a zero. Okay. And then we updated, uh-huh. and you would get thrown to a Draycart emergency cell. So this is when we're doing manual updates as well. Right. So we obviously did not push this image because, you know, and the way I figured this out was the worst thing because this was when I was initially doing the ARM64 builds for Xenia. Um, and I thought, oh, maybe my frame buffer just isn't working mm-hmm. because it doesn't, right? On, on the Mac OS VM or whatever, it doesn't work. So I just thought, oh, it's taking its time. Come back 30 minutes later, still got a black screen. So I open a serial console and I see the the like dreaded, you know, you're in an emergency shell. Um, and it's like, it's one of those issues where you don't know what's going on like at all. So I just on the off chance go, okay, I'll change that to a one. <laughs> and it just boots like that. And it's like, I, I don't know what's going on because the Drake Art documentation is like awful. I'm, so, I'm sorry about the people who make it, but it's just not great. Um, this is also why I spent a month making my own one because I didn't realize it could do the things we needed. Um, so you, you don't know what's going on, you change it. And then, yeah, so that means we had to make a user space utility to do updates because mm-hmm. we needed to update Grub at the same time, mm-hmm. which on Xenia is weird because you have to go into CH route to do it. So if somebody wants to update now, what is the uh, process of doing so? Uh, so you would type sudo fox update. And so I'll type that now. Uh, you type in your sudo password if you've got one. Um, and then it will just say, like, what you're using. And an update is available. Run this command to update. Mm-hmm. And you run Fox type, like, tag you, and then it will just update for you. You just reboot. That's much simpler. <laughs> yeah. Uh, everything, like, around Xenia now is, like, we've got the basics done. It's mm-hmm. just making it seamless for users. Like... We don't want a user to have to make a CA true to update their grub. We want to do that automatically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we, we don't want a user having to edit the install file because they use an NVMe drive, right? But it's like, you know, half of my work now is like making Python utilities to do this because I know Python. So obviously there's a lot of documentation around immutable Fedora. There's a bit of documentation around immutable mm-hmm. Debian now. Was there anything on Immutable Gen 2? No. Um, okay. So, pretty, a lot of Immutable distros use something called OS Tree, mm-hmm. which um, I've looked into. It looks so complex that I just, not an option. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it's essentially Git for like a file system. It's very weird. Um, we had to just come up with a way to do it. Um, so it was like, okay, how do we get this to work? So we need something to boot and it needs to be read only. I was like, oh, that's too easy. Let, let's do something weird. Um, so what do live images use? Okay, they use squash FS. Okay. Let's make a manual gen to install, squash a fest that, and then try and boot it on the same system. And every time I make a change, I have to undo the squash a fest, make a change, like see entry into it, make a change, squash a fest it again, and reboot. It took forever. And this was when I was building the custom in it around fest. It took ages, right? But yeah, we, we did that. And uh, then we got a system that was read only. So you go into it. Um, you log in, you can't do anything. <laughs> um, it's great. And, you know, we had Flatpak installed, but we didn't have a desktop, so you couldn't use it. It was a um, perfect system. So our, our first release was, like, bare minimum had GNOME. Uh, slash ETC was not writable. Slash VAR was not writable. Well, that was writable, but as an overlay, so it disappeared when you reboot. Right. So you couldn't add users. You couldn't change your password. The only thing you could do was install Flatpaks. Um, that was our first release. Okay. Uh, we very quickly realized maybe that's not the <laughs> best, you know, uh, on multiple levels. Um, so then we worked on like, okay, there's some weird things because the way we do things is called an overlay, <laughs> which is when you boot a live image, it creates an overlay in RAM. And that's how you have it to be writable. <laughs> um, so we do that, but store it persistently. Um, so... The, the issues you come into is like, if your base system updates something, your overlay is always going to take precedent on that. So if we just had an overlay over the whole system, mm -hmm. say if you install some package, um, but then the system updates and your version is out of date, but something is depending on that newer version being there, mm -hmm. right? I know it's a bit all weird. Your system will then just not boot. But it will boot, but it won't, you won't be able to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, as I said, the issue of people just using a merge. Um, so the way we sort of tackle that is how do we get this to be a pleasant experience, but also doing all the safeguarding we can. Um, and luckily, Portage has a thing called sets. So if you've done Gensu, you know you emerge at Weld. Mm -hmm. Now at Weld is a set, it's basically a list of packages. Um, so what we do is create a custom set called at Xenia. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a wrapper called Fox Merge. Uh, everything's Fox. Um, it's kind of a theme. Um, so if I run like Fox Merge now, um, I'll do sudo Fox Merge list. We don't need sudo there. But anyway, it will just list the packages I have. Mm -hmm. So it means when people go to update it, instead of updating at world and completely screwing your dependencies over when you next go to update, we only update the packages that people install themselves. Mm -hmm. So I mean, like in a nutshell, that's kind of how Xenia is progressing. It's just like trying to make this work well. Mm -hmm. They start as a meme. You know, yeah. Yeah. And now, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've, I'm in too deep now. <laughs> it's like, I, I, this is what I do now. Um, before this, I just used Fedora and I was happy, and now I make Xenia Linux. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, always, always fun. <laughs> so, if people don't want to install applications, what is the uh, like suggested way? Yeah, so we have a wiki document on this. I can I can send you this. So you, I, I found the link already. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so first off, if if there's a flat pack, please use flat pack because it's like it's gonna be the best way to do things. Um, it's flat pack works well. You know, it's actually recommended on Gensu for stuff like Steam. Um, and then you've got so if you're installing like a CLI application, right? Like <laughs> flat pack isn't the best for that. Um, so. We have this thing called DistroBox. If you've used Fedora Silverblue, you know Toolbox. Um, DistroBox is very similar. It just lets you have different distros as well. So you can do like, I don't know, Ubuntu, for example. Um, DistroBox is really cool because like, I can have the, yeah, it is super No, cool. I, I was, I, I like, when it first came out, I was going to get um, Luca on the show and things just didn't uh, work out. We were both busy and it just never happened. But yeah, DistroBox is awesome. Distro, yeah, apart from like the surface level stuff of like, oh, I can have the AUR on my Xenia system. Mm -hmm. Like, you can export applications and have them appear in your desktop and just work. 
like for example, um, I needed the mega client for something. I think it's got a flat pack, but I didn't realize. I installed it in a distro box, exported it, and now I can just go in my like application menu and just open it, and it mm. will just work. Like even if the container isn't started yet, it will work. And then you can also do like development on it because you can give it root privileges, like which is like privileged um, mm. in Podman or Docker. So if I want to build a Xenia stage manually, I can just go into a Gentoo environment like that. Like I have an alias set. I type G and now I'm in Gentoo. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, this robot is cool. Uh, and then if all else fails, you've got Fox Merge, which is using the system portage and overlaying that on top. Um, an important thing to note with Xenia, you are never editing the system directly. It's always an overlay. Mm -hmm. So if something does go wrong, we have a recovery mode, which basically just turns off the overlays and boots you into essentially what is a live environment. Um, what is really cool about this, uh, my ThinkPad, when we was setting up like encryption with for Xenia, I completely converted it without a USB or anything from a normal ButterFS install to Luke's on ButterFS, like without a stick at all. It's it's a lifesaver sometimes. 